walking down any street in the world, imagine anyone around you could be a torture victim. The IRCT, International Rehabilitation Council for Torture Victims, is a global movement. Through its 150 member centres all over the world, it treats over 100,000 victims of torture a year. The IRCT's vision is a world without torture. Its mission is to ensure that torture victims receive proper rehabilitation and have full access to justice, in addition to working towards the prevention of torture worldwide. Often we talk about torture survivors living in the shadows uh, because they don't dare and they cannot step out into the light and claim justice for, for the perpetrators and the evils that, that have been done to them. I think today, uh, with information you know, flowing on YouTube and Facebook and the Internet, Perpetrators can no longer hide, and I think this is, uh, of course, excellent. Uh, we don't want perpetrators to be able to hide anywhere, and our special task is to document torture and prove that there has been torture, and then to really uh, challenge governments and courts to bring perpetrators uh, in front of court so that uh, victims can get justice. And I think this is one way of, of uh, eliminating torture. To help bring this about, the IRCT used forensic investigation as a method of documenting torture, often with far-reaching results. Developments in, in Egypt, and for that matter in many of the Arabic countries and North Africa, uh, is quite uh, astonishing. Mubarak left um, um, almost every Friday. People go to Tahrir Square. And uh, I bump into lots of um, victims of torture in the square. They speak out ab about their what happened to them. And this is a momentum that is very hard to stop. The fear barrier was broken. In June 2010, a movement began with the death of Khalid Saeed a 28-year-old man who was brutally tortured and murdered by the police. His family contacted the IRCT Egyptian member centre in Cairo, El Nadim, to see if they could help. This man was tortured by the police. There were you know, a million and one witnesses to say that he was tortured by the police. You know, starting from the person, uh, from the owner of the internet where he was sitting, to the son of that man, to the neighbors, to people on the street. يعني هما لما هو لما دخل من هنا وهم دخلوا ورا منه كان هو وصل للحته دي وظهروا كده لكده هما راحوا داخلين من ورا منه ماسكينه كده. لا أنا بحلم الصبح بصحى الصبح على سرخته وهو بيتضرب. في ايه في ايه في ايه قعدوا يضربوا فيه في الرخام ببقى شايفاه وهو بيتضرب وبينزل منه دم واسنان وحاجات بالمغبرين وقعدوا يضربوا بيه طبعا بدماغه جامد واخد بالك كده كده and so came out the forensic report which is i mean i'm not a forensic specialist but you didn't have to be to realize that this was a farce. I mean, it really created an uproar. A Facebook page was created in order to bring this injustice to the people of Egypt and the world. The Khalid Said Facebook pages were, was, well, came at the right time. A quarter of a million joined this page and then after a few months became half a million and now it's passed. It's past them one million. This Facebook page gave young Egyptians someone they could identify with. He was just like them. Uh, 
الستة دي من مئات من حوالي الستة دي اللي حصلت ولكن الفرق في حالة خالد سعيد ان هو شاب ووشه فعلا شبه كل الشباب نفس الجيل بتاعنا وان صورته بعد التعذيب كانت صورة قضية خالد سعيد جت في وقت احنا كنا وصلنا فيه لذروة الغضب لذروة الغضب يعني كنا خلاص لان لان النظام في اواخر ايامه كان بدا يجي على الكل حتى حتى الناس اللي معاها فلوس او الناس اللي ممكن تكون مستريحه ماديا فال 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 فالانفجار حصل في 25 يناير I don't remember now whether the idea came from us or from the IR city because we are in in contact all the time anyway but there was this offer that if you can send us the report then we can have a consultation I was asked by the IRCT to look into the Khalid Said case. They wanted to know the course of death and, and uh, did he have a, a proper post-mortem examination. Uh, was justice done? And um, my conclusion together with a Portuguese uh, forensic pathologist, Duarte Vieira, we concluded that uh, no, he did not have a proper post-mortem examination. There were so many flaws, so many things that they didn't uh, do, they didn't examine properly. It did not live up to international standards at all. What, what came back a uh, few weeks later uh, was translated into uh, Arabic. Uh, it was published on our website, on the Nadim Center website. It was published on uh, the Khaled Said uh, uh, Facebook page. It was circulated um, widely. We often see political consequences of what we do, but this was, uh, it was very surprising and very rewarding, I must say, that our report was taken seriously. In this case, we documented that he did not have a fair and proper uh, examination and justice was not done. I feel that uh, this man is talking through us now. That is one of the important uh, aspects of forensic medicine. We give the victims a voice. When I examine a homicide victim, uh, in not becoming emotional, but I feel all the time that he should have his rights. Maybe during his last, last moments of life, he was thinking, somebody will come and document this. I will have justice. And that is my, that is my uh, job to do that. We are trying uh, in a particular work that we are doing now to use the Istanbul Protocol, which is really a, a guide how to document torture better, uh, to document uh, cases of torture and, and try to bring them with uh, litigation uh, organizations in front of courts to really show that with better documentation one can actually get sentences against perpetrators. The information gathered and provided by medical uh, reports, according to the Istanbul Protocol, provide additional information necessary in the legal investigations. Uh, they provide the facts and they provide the interpretation of the findings with regard to the physical and mental health lesions, which lawyers or judges, prosecutors, won't be able uh, to assess themselves just because they don't have that type of expertise. Uh, however, if an uh, expert physician comes to the conclusion that the allegations and the findings are coherent, this will give great support to the investigation of the torture allegation case. Unfortunately, very few perpetrators could be held uh, accountable for their crimes uh, against humanity. So if you can uh, punish a, a few uh, perpetrators, really the effect of the, on, it, on the society, on the system, is much higher than uh, you, you can imagine. So it will definitely uh, lower the practice of the torture in that uh, particular uh, countries. I think breaking the cycle of violence is very important to really see that um, people who are perpetrating, people who are torturing, 
um, are brought to justice. And I think this is the only way that um, the cycle of violence can really be broken. As a health-based human rights movement, IRCT members throughout the world engage in innovative, holistic means of rehabilitation for survivors of torture. The methods used by rehabilitation centres vary from country to country. The Natural Growth Project, developed in London by Freedom from Torture, is just one example of rehabilitation in action. The project uses nature as a tool to help survivors who have lost their voice find it again. The way we work here is to combine psychotherapy with working in nature. And the essence of the project is that everybody, wherever they're from, whatever they've been through, has a connection with nature. And if we can access that in our work, straight away something begins to happen with our clients. Through growing plants as part of their therapy, Torture survivors find a connection with the life they're creating in the ground and the life within themselves. There was a, a client who came to me very, very fragile, extremely traumatised, had had a very terrible torture history. And she worked with me individually and she also worked with the gardener. She came to see him and help him in the garden because she loved being here. Growing something, it made me forget about stress, forget about I've been in the prison, forget about the time I'm doing it. My mind is just concentrated with what I'm doing. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm thinking when I plan this plan, I don't know, I have to water it and look after it, you know. I'm thinking about that, I forget about my stress. My life is beginning again because I thought I was already not in this world anymore. And when you plant like flower, when you see the flower growing, you can see sometimes if you don't put some water there, the flower will be, you know, will be dead. It just like me. It was I was need someone like that to look after me, to become again like like someone. Yeah, that's what I thought in the first time when Mary took me to the garden. The change in that woman who came here having been released from a hospital and unable to be in a room where there were other people to this relaxed person in a group on the allotment is enormous. So one of our clients said, they broke my body, they broke my life. They could not break my spirit, and in nature my spirit is free. Freedom from torture is one of the basic uh, human rights that must be respected at all times, in all places. We feel we have an extension, you know, in the, at, the, um, at the IRCT. It is very helpful and very supportive to know that you're not alone. And if you have those kind of friends, outside your country, you know, you feel that your outreach is much wider than anybody thinks, you know, that when the, when the government or the police, when they restrain your freedom, you know, they think that they will silence you, that there, you have so many extensions of your voice all over, and um, that gives people power and gives them, strengthens their capacity to endure. I am so happy that the IRCT asked me to look into this case because it's so meaningful. I feel that I have given Khalid Said a voice, a voice that will help uh, in the Egyptian situation, uh, giving uh, Egyptians a better life. So his death was not in vain. People are not going to stay silent again about torture, about injustices, and this is going to continue for some time. And this momentum is going to change institutions. And hopefully, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm optimistic about this. Torture is, is horrific, but it's not hopeless.